Welcome, Andy. Um, it's really great to have you working with us at Prime. Um, we are loving having you on the Prime Ops team. Um, what's been your first impression? Obviously, you've been here a couple of weeks. Um, what's what's been your first impression of Prime or of the team? Yeah. Oh, thank you, Amy. Um, uh, yeah, two weeks has swept by. It's now four weeks. Um, I think uh, having been a prime tutor for ooh, nearly, well, probably over 10 years, um, I'm in a different position now. And I think the prime, the prime office team have been amazing. Uh, it's like having a, another family, really um where i think you're very open um i've felt very welcomed uh you're a friendly bunch and i i know uh even before i became the ceo i knew how hard working uh you were and are um i think i've become much more aware of how tolerant of strong personalities um or the the staff are and very accommodating um don't mind me turning up in my uh, leathers on my motorbike and i suppose if i was summarizing it it would be um really you're the glue that sticks us all together really this this family of prime great um for those obviously who don't know you, would you like to tell us a bit about yourself? What uh, what led you to come to Prime? What 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 was the spark that lit the flame, as they say? Ah, uh, well, tell me. Okay, so um, of course I'm tall, dark, handsome, charismatic, and no, no, not really. I'm short and semi-dark um <laughs> i don't think anybody I don't, maybe my wife thinks i'm handsome but um charismatic mm, sometimes um yeah what brought me to prime um well i think like many people i i got i got geeted um so for those who don't know john Gita was um, one of the founding members of Prime and uh, an incredible tour de force. And uh, as a young doctor, I, I I was inspired by the role model he set and the invitations that, that he gave to come on board with Prime. But actually, I think it all started long before that. Um, as a young student, I joined a group of Christian healthcare professionals led by a doctor uh, or several doctors, Mervyn Suffield, Derek Munday, Peter Dale. And that sort of morphed into Doctor's Dilemmas in the 1990s. Um, and I think it was attending that and both in in Burswood but also in Birmingham that really made me want to become more involved in Prime and I suppose in 2011 I I had to become John Gita at a meeting in Albania where he couldn't attend and uh a tutor request was whizzed around to say help can somebody stand in for john at short notice and i think from that moment on when i did um yeah i i i found a very happy home in prime um so that's my journey if you like um that's great to hear and um I mean, you talk about obviously back in the 90s um, when the vision of Prime was in its sort of early stages. I think it had been a, a vision for quite a group of 
of GPs who'd ha- often met um, socially and just said, wouldn't it be brilliant if we could um, put some of these values forward and, and get them into the heart of healthcare? And I, yeah. having known John personally myself, I know that was a big calling of his um, and David Shapu and, and John Caro and some of the others. Um, so in talking about vision, um, have you had much chance to think about your role within the prime vision going forwards? So here we are in 2023, post-pandemic um, for most. And obviously these are changing times, but prime is still going strong. And, and would you say that vision is still very strong? And, and what, what would you say were the next steps for you? in your role as CEO? Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's uh, that's a tough question. Um, four weeks in, um, I think I'm still t- trying to find my, my feet. Um, uh, you're right, there have been huge changes locally uh, in the UK, but globally as well. And, um, Responding to these changes, both personally, uh, but also as an organization, is 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 a process of adaptation. So I think um, my my vision is very clear that um, our global connectivity needs to be strengthened um it needs to become trans more transparent our interdependence and yet also our ability to remain family um crucial to all of this and i think as as the organization grows we need to have suitable robust governance um i was appointed i applied and was appointed on the basis of the of a clear five-year plan that our trustees had drawn up and um the ship um in the middle of last year so i think my vision is to see that implemented we we've already started the that five year ten year if you like to do that we need to develop excellent materials to support our own healthcare professionals in our own countries um but also in a abro- abroad where where we're partnering i've had the joy just last week of sharing and teaching with prime tutors working with the clergy to promote um whole person care as a as a pedagogy um and i think i've been reminded really that the the teaching the information sharing is one part but really it's the training and its implementation in daily practice that's crucial so empowering that to happen is 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 vital obviously you've got vast experience of of being involved in prime programs overseas and also um other programs um what would you say um has left which which of these nations that you visited or projects that you visited would you say has left the biggest impact with you or do you think that that that's a difficult question to answer because there are so many (laughs) um well I, I suppose for me they're all very different I wouldn't say I have vast experience there are there are tutors who have got much longer and wider experience than myself i mean i've been to formerly overseas i've been to albania to pakistan um and to india so very sort of eastern europe asia based um i've 
taught the global health elective and as i said with the clergy so it's not hugely um not not, not as wide as perhaps others but no the i think the lasting impression is um for me has been seeing the resilience of our in-country tutors and partners in countries like Pakistan, um, the country where there is international isolation, there is a, a toxic crisis of where terrorism and economic downturn and natural disasters like um, earthquakes, floods, and yet the love of Christ shines through in these people and the way that they reach out to patients to but also to their colleagues so I think my last trip in February where I saw um, incredible signs of hope and restoration of people suffering with severe mental illness in rural communities with with no state provision, mm. just phenomenal what a small difference can make. So, yeah, I think that's probably my my go to as a as a sign of inspiration for me. No, absolutely. Um, as a GP. Um, what would you say have been the highlights of your career so far? Um, you're still working as a as a GP part time, is that correct? Yeah, I do one day a week now on a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and as a, as a medical professional, do you have a particular field of interest? Um, what what made you? think about becoming a general practitioner as opposed to specializing in another part of the medical field so I think for me that it's it I, I'm I'm a people person I enjoy listening and hearing people's narratives um, and the joy of being a family doctor is walking with people through their lives some of them may be birth to grave but it's the it's sharing the highs and the lows of their lives and that of their families to help i suppose when i can and sometimes it's just walking with them and supporting them as a fellow human being through their pain and suffering but also through their joys and celebrations um it's an incredible privilege um you know people share things that are very intimate um i think the joy of being a family doctor is also you are reliant on your on your communication skills but also very it's not high tech which is i, I quite like but i i have um you know, I think for me, it is the freedom also to be able to work still with a lot of independence. Um, I mean, I have got a special interest in ophthalmology. Um, I was very involved in teaching and training that, but also general family medicine training in um, the uh, East Kent uh, GP vocational training scheme and um, I have developed I suppose in the last 10 years an interest in domestic abuse and teaching and training doctors and other healthcare professionals in to improve with their personal and organizational responses to domestic abuse so those are some areas um, and obviously with prime being integral to that the the joy of integrating whole person care and what does whole person care mean to you oh that was a good segue wasn't it, wasn't uh, it <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah that wasn't planned folks by the way um 
I think I think the the, the Prime website. I, I can't get a better definition, really. It, it's um, you know healthcare that provides for the whole person, body, mind, and spirit. I'm going to read this because, um, and it has to be delivered with competence, with compassion, respect for the individual, and integrity. Um, that that is a is a, a good definition for me. But I think it it's having a a passion to to under to have a true patient perspective and understand and work with them so what matters to them most is empowered um and that may be a patient it may be a relative it may be a carer it may be a colleague um yeah so i think for me that's that's the sort of nub of whole person care well it's it's brilliant to have you on board with us um now you're a very busy man <laughs> like so many people within prime who we know um but when you do have free time what do you like to do well i'm i'm very blessed i have five children um all adults and i have two grandchildren who live close by so i spend most of my spare time catching up with them um because i've got i've got one in the far east um so uh yeah so i do that um i enjoy getting out in nature whether that be on two legs or two wheels cycling um I play online chess and when my neighbours can bear it, I um, play the piano <laughs> very badly. <laughs> um, yeah, so those are the things. My wife keeps me out of the uh, kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I love spending time with the two grandchildren who... Um, we're very fortunate to be able to look after during term time one day a week and uh, so yeah it's um, uh, some of the things I get up to anyway. That's brilliant well we look forward to um, being with you on this journey Andy with Prime and seeing Thank you. you perhaps in a few months time you'll come back and and update us a bit on how how things have been going and and any exciting stories or experiences that have been your testimony since working for Prime. I I I would value that uh, invitation to come back and please uh, anybody listening to the video just um you know if you want to contact me um, contact the office uh, I'm sure um i'd love to hear from you and your thoughts and ideas for prime as well thank you very much amy oh, thank you thank you andy okay. take care